Good evening. The opinions and statements voiced by our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this network. Enjoy the shows. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Now, historic films made in the spring of 1948 and just released show Enoe Talk preparing for heavily guarded and still largely secret tests of new atomic weapons. The test's purpose is to measure atomic effects on thousands of different materials, 30,000 tons of them, not, as at Bikini, to prove military effectiveness. San Francisco police say that nine persons have been arrested in a narcotics raid on the headquarters of the Grateful Dead, a widely popular singing group. Two members of the group, Rod McKernan and Robert Weir, and their business manager, Danny Ripkin, have been booked on suspicion of possessing narcotics. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, strange lights are causing a viral buzz on YouTube. Could we have caught extraterrestrial activity on a recent newscast? Brandon Arroyo investigates. As the newscast ended, the controversy began back on September 26th. What is that light shining in the back of the dark night sky? With coverage reaching all the way back to 1948, for over 70 years, Fate magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Now, Fate Magazine Radio is carrying on that tradition of setting the standard in Paranormal Talk Radio as we report and discuss some of the most mysterious and perplexing phenomena imaginable in this strange world of ours. Now, here is your host of Fate Magazine Radio, Kat Hobson. Hello there. Thank y'all for listening. I just wanted to share this brief interview that I did with my friend Rich. Rich is one of the originals with the Scientific Coalition and UAP Studies. He is just a fantastic person. And the, the conference that they just put on this weekend was fabulous. It was um, moderated by Alejandro. Excuse me, Alejandro Rojos, who is one of my favorite people. Y'all have heard him on the show. He is um, he is really special. And they put on a conference, UFO Congress in Phoenix. I've attended that, and it's a wonderful place too. That's I tell you what, you just cannot beat these conferences. Um. This weekend's was virtual, which means I sat my de- at my desk for two days and didn't mind a bit. I actually was busy um, trying to take notes, which was silly because you have access to that for three months. But you should check that conference out in the near future. I think you'll just absolutely enjoy it. But anyway, when I was watching the whistleblower hearings... I thought, man, I need to be talking to somebody about this. 
my first choice was my friend Chase, who I haven't talked to since I came home from California. And I hope that she is doing absolutely great. And I thought, well, I'm going to be, you know, talking to Rich. Rich has a great view on this as well. I'll just call Rich. So I did. And realized that he was in the throes of organizing his uh, UFO conference, UAP conference, the Scientific Coalition on UAP Studies. And he was so nice. We scheduled it for 6 o'clock last night. And girl, I, you know, he was tired. So girls and guys. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to crank this up. I just wanted to give you all an idea of what you were going to be hearing. This is about a 42 minute interview and I'm going to run it straight through. I would be willing to bet Spreaker is going to put some ads in here somewhere. So be patient with us. And I hope you enjoy this as much as I did because this guy... This guy is all that when it comes to UAPs, research, and a knowledge of how things work. He used to be my state director with MUFON, so he does know what he's talking about. Y'all enjoy. So joining me is my friend who is one of the best people in UFO research going. He is a founding member of SCU, Scientific Coalition on UAP Studies. They are actually hosting this weekend their conference, which is off the chain. I have participated all day long, learned so much stuff, met so many people, and it's virtual, and I'm still meeting all these people, not to mention seeing friends and catching up. So it's been a great day. It's been a big day. It's been a big day for him <laughs> because he is who's coordinating all this and facilitating it and having fun. And I'm sure right now he's saying, thank goodness for Alejandro Rojas. But my guest is Rich Hoffman. Rich, I'm so glad you're here. I know you have had a day. Yeah, it's been a Actually, it's been a very great, energetic day for me. I mean, I'm, 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 I've been so psyched and looking forward to this conference uh, for, like, I've been planning it for, like, about, you know, six or seven months, you know, so mm -hmm. ultimately trying to set it up, make sure, making sure it happens and getting all the presenters lined up and, you know, and doing all that stuff like that, plus, you know, building the, the, the conference tool and putting that in place and then getting people informed about when to come in and, it's been wild. Uh, it's been tiring, but at the same time, it, it, for me, it's a joy. So, well, I, and I'm glad to bring people together like you, by the way. Well, you know, the best part is that it is a joy because you get to see the fruition of all this hard work. And, you know, you had great speakers. I enjoyed every bit of it, but I was going to mention to you that at the end, we had a little networking time, virtual networking. It was fantastic, by the way. I did send a message about that. But one of the people at one of my tables was John Platt, who yeah. works with Ryan and Ryan Graves. And um, I was just curious, you know, with all of the stuff that you had going on, getting ready for this wonderful event that we're going to even talk more about in a moment, but we had an unprecedented UFO congressional hearing this week. And I have heard so many mixed reviews um, from negative Nellies to, oh my gosh, we're so close to, um, you know, AOC is going to break down the doors and go in and drag an alien out. I mean, you know, I just, <laughs> I do not. I do not, um, I do not doubt that she would be capable of that. Just going to say, but I do think that, um, I think that the truth is going to lay somewhere in between all of those things, but this is something that is a passion for you. Um, understanding it, learning, wanting answers. You've, you've, you've worked your life 
and fields that um, give you access to some information here and there. You have colleagues that are more involved in those areas of science that would go with the, you know, flying the craft that we have. So where where did you come down with that hearing? What was your take on that? Well, let me first say that I'm extremely thrilled that we have any hearing on mm -hmm. UAP. <laughs> yeah, that's my take. And, uh, you know, I mean, this doesn't happen. It's, it's very historic. Uh, I was thrilled that they were actually going to conduct it. I also had a lot of, uh, you know, mixed expectations about it. You know, I didn't think that maybe it was going to go well until I learned who was going to be the witnesses. And then I felt a lot of relief. Um, you had three incredibly knowledgeable people that are, you know, two that are pilots. And then one, David Grush, who, by the way, was at the conference last year, and so mm -hmm. was Ryan Graves uh, that we had in the SU conference. And, you know, uh, so I was thrilled that, you know, that they were there. And then Fravor and the, the Nimitz case is one of the my favorite cases of all time because we Absolutely. studied it to the nth degree, and it's without question. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there, I mean, with, you know, that are newbies in this. And there's a lot of us that have been around this for a long time. The long time people might say, well, we've already heard their stories and why are we hearing it again? And we should hear more. The, the newbies are saying, well, I didn't know that, you know, and that's kind of like, you know, True. new. And, 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 and so you've got, you know, you have to balance the fact that, you know, that we live in a split world, you know, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. And so there's, there's perspectives on always both sides, which is why we got such a divided, you know, uh, political sphere. Let me clarify that, that to me, these three people represented the best of what we have in the way of UAP stuff going on. I mean, it, it, you have the two pilots who have had incredible encounters that have seen something without question, who are, you know, definitely top-notch people. They're, they, they weren't, in, you know, they're not... They were put in those positions because they are excellent people uh, and flying, you know, billion, billion dollar aircraft. I mean, you don't you don't just throw anybody in there. That's true. Uh, then you have David Grush, who had extremely strong credentials, who risked his career, decided to get out of the government because he was he needed to bring this forward, who was a position in the position to know. OK, he was at the UAP task force. He had credentials enough to be able to ask around to get all the information they need. And guess what? He's heard the same stories we've all heard about the fact that there was a crash called Roswell, that there was a crash in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, that there's a, these other crashes. And, you know, we all know about them. We've all heard about them. And we all heard about the fact that the government picked up sub debris and everything else and stuff like that. So guess what? He's probably now hearing the same thing and probably has talked to people. And, and in fact, he talked to people and got them to write uh, incredible statements who are firsthand, by the way, mm -hmm. who know about the fact that these things did go on and, and is now the whistleblower and in a sense bringing it forward. And his credentials are top notch. And we should all be you know, appreciative of all three of these people for putting this on the official record meaning congressional level record, you know, even though we've well, all absolutely. It before, I mean, it's a matter of, con it's a matter of congressional record at this point. Yes. Yeah. Which then allows the Congress to actually do what they're starting to do, which is to say, okay, well, we need to take this into closed doors and we need to get the information that we can get and we mm -hmm. need to start investigating. And that's precisely what we want. Same time, that you know, you also have a, a now a committee that they're proposing, which will be you know, looking at records and stuff like that from the standpoint of you know, like the, you know, with the Schumer, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, NDAA and everything else that's going on. If, when that gets signed by the president, that will enact us having the ability to do reviews uh, on all the various documents and, uh, and get a total wide government uh, release of these records, and and so. Transparency can happen, will happen at some point down the road, 
and they have to justify why they want to keep it, you know, classified, and they're going to have a hard time pushing that. So wow. I'm extremely excited by everything that's going on, and I think that this is, you know, helping us to get where we want to go, uh, at least from the political standpoint. And it's also going to do a lot of other things, Kate, uh, Kat. It's going to help us to get, you know, for example, the, the, the government could come out and say, well, we want, we do want to work with, uh, like, you know, academia or SPU or some other organizations. And now there's a chance where that even could, could happen again. And, and so I'm encouraged by that, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, they could not find a better group of individuals to work with than SCU. You Thank have you. so much. Well, you're welcome. But, I mean, you're... Your level of requirement for an actual member or a contributing member is so stringent that there's no way any person that was approached through SCU would be deemed anything less than an exemplary person in their field. And... Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that was your whole purpose, was to be able to have a truly scientific community, knowledgeable and interested in every facet that could be of interest, you know, in ufology and yep. applicable sciences. And you've achieved that. And if anyone doubts that, go to the website. Look at this year's roster of speakers and look at the membership. If you have any problem at all, just go look at them. You can find them on Facebook and see everything you need to see. So, you know, it's a brilliant group of people. And I am yeah. so, I'm so impressed every time I get to speak with, with anyone in that group. And I was going to tell you that, you know, I go back a long ways with this. I, 59 years ago, right, is when I got started. Mm -hmm. And I was living in Dayton, Ohio, and that's where Project Blue Book was. And 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 the, for me, the thing was that I got connected with Heineck. I was here Heineck present in the city of Dayton at the Engineers Club and various other things. And, you know, even back in those days, Dr. Jalen Heineck was looking, especially when he kind of got out of it, he wanted to be able to get scientists, and engaged and doing exactly what we're doing now in SU. And he never had really the ability to get that because of all the stigma that, that was out there and the, the, you know, the, the fact that there's nothing to it and it was dismissed. But now we're living in a different time. We're living in a time where, you know, that now the government's admitted the fact that UFOs are real. I mean, they, they exist. And, mm -hmm. and you hear congressional people doing our our membership is growing exponentially. It's, it, it, we're up to 260 people now. We started off with like five. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> we, we, we started with five, and now we're up to 260. And you know, and like you heard today, uh, many of these people are actually SCU members, and and, and they're top notch people, and mm -hmm. and they've got expertise in we're, we're all over the board in terms of various disciplines. We've got like everything from psychologists to physicists to mathematicians to you know, our archaeologists and, and, and uh, you know, and a whole bunch of other fields. And we're all doing what Heineck would, li would like to have had happen back in the early days. So I'm thrilled. Well, I'll tell you that um, I did meet a member that I did not know when we were doing the networking, and that was Lee Dines, who is your European connection. Yep. And... What a gentleman. You know, I'm so glad that he is back full force and and just so charming. I I spoke with oh, I got to speak with Abigail. She was in one of my groups. And just so y'all know, Abigail White is someone who is going to be someone to watch. I'm telling you. She is she's already creating equipment and getting things going. And she is, is she post-grad or does she have her doctorate yet? Uh, not yet. No. She's, she's working fact, on she's, that. Uh, she's, yeah. She's, 
she's working on that route. Um, plans to do her, uh, you know, her hard work. She, you know, she's part of Harvard and she's also with the Galileo project. She is with the Galileo Abby project. Lowe. Yeah. And so there's, there's incredible stuff and she's just a smart woman. It's she a, is a smart, smart woman. woman and she's a joy. She's a joy yeah. to listen to. She loves what yeah. she does. That's what all of y'all do. That's why I think this group is so amazing. You know, it's, um, I do have to ask you something and this is a little bit sensationalistic, but it's just mm-hmm. going to have to be. When Nancy Mace asked, first of all, we've already talked about <laughs> recovered craft, right? But she's like, were any pilots found with these, you know, with these downed craft? And the answer was biologics were taken with it, with them. And, yep. and she was like, were those biologics human? And the one word answer was no. The look on the people's face in that room, most of the cameras were on him, but not all. And the expressions when that answer came, what did you think? How did you feel? Well, you have to understand, for me, I, I, I was, he, he, I saw him on the interview with Ross Colthart, you know, a number of mm-hmm. weeks ago. And when he actually got into it, I think, to be honest with you, he was a lot more open and more, you know, revealing than even what he did at the, the hearing. So, yes. I mean. He the was. fact that he in the in the in the interview with Ross Coulthard at for N- News Nation, I mean, he alluded more to even the fact that there have been murders mm-hmm. <laughs> and there have been others that uh, that have been harmed. But he was very clear about the fact that the, the beings are non-human and, and and talking about non-human intelligence. And I would, you know, I, I'm I'm still struck with that. Because I, you know, even though he looks at it in the perspective of the fact that he doesn't want to say it's ET because he doesn't know where it, the origination is, mm-hmm. uh, I would also throw out to you that we don't know that these are not us from a future time using time machine or time travel. I'm so I'm open in, to that in, suggestion. In that context, you know, they are human, <laughs> you know. But I mean, what? Well, I guess uh, I don't like the, the the words the non-human aspect. And I think that it would, we would probably have to, unless you know the origin and, and the, where they're from and stuff like that, we don't, we just don't know. The, the beings yes. that are described by a lot of, you know, experiencers and things like that look awfully humanoid. I mean, they've got a head, they got, you know, two eyes or something, and they have like, you know, places for a mouth, whether they use it or not. They have ears where they, you know, the, where we would have yes. ears. They They have finger digits, they got two arms, they, they have two legs. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the the biggest, you know, common description of the gray, right? You know, and so, and the fact that their head is erected and straight out, you know, uh, you know, on the body, uh, that's being bipedal. And we're the only bipedal, you know, creatures on this planet. Uh, so, I mean, how do we know it's not time machine kind of like thing or time travel, if you would? Or well, you know, there's a book about it, that. They are yeah. us. And yeah. Michael did a great job with that book, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and, Michael is great with that. Yep. Yes. And, you know, the first time I spoke with him, I was just Michael kind Master, of blown. Right. Thank you. Yes. But, you know, he is of the impression that somehow or other, through the course of time, something has you know, gone awry with our DNA. And perhaps they're coming back to sam- get samples in order to fix that. And that's definitely an option. I mean, it's as good as anything else we have right now. And yes. and this is a PhD level doctor. I mean, educator, and you know, and researcher. And I just found that that was the first time I had been exposed to the idea that they were us. And that's why I found that when I met him and I saw his book cover, I was like, oh we have to talk, <laughs> you know, you are going to have to come on with me. But mainly the book was, was something that definitely contributed to my interest mm-hmm. in who these beings are. Because if I they're us. Also, 
quite revealing, didn't you, that, that when we heard Ryan Graves saying that these objects off the East Coast are still there? <laughs> yes. Well, the Tyler first time I heard him say that was them. at SCU, yeah. you know, yeah. previously. And, right. you know, and I'm thinking, and it, it's not a couple. It's a fleet of yep. UFOs. And that they were... They weren't actively interfering, but it was intimidating trying to fly, knowing this is here. Yep. You know, I don't even know how they got in the air. Uh, Our aviators uh, are fierce. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they are. They but, are. but, but I still don't know how he got in the air, knowing, knowing these things are are in the way, are not trying to actively take them down, that they're not readily visible all the time like the one that went between them it was between them before they saw it it just that could have gone so awry yeah and i think that you know the other the other telling thing that that we have to be aware of uh is that if you if you in the presentations we had today if you remember that there was one slide where the guy was talking about the uh uh, one student was talking about electromagnetic effects that are, mm-hmm. that are seen. Well, guess what? You know, the Nimitz case had the, the radar jamming. That's electromagnetic yes. uh, uh, jamming that's going on. If you take a look at the uh, the case, you know, that happened in Tehran, uh, the mm-hmm. Tehran four incident, you had the missile systems went dead. The uh, The navigation systems went dead. Uh, they had jamming going on with that object, uh, and then eventually uh, two two F fours were basically jammed, if you would. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the object goes away, and it goes over the uh, I think it was the Mirabad Air Force, or then not the uh, uh, Mirabad uh, Airport, and their radar was uh, jam- uh, had jamming. So I mean we know that, and the problem and the challenge we're going to have is even when you go out to try to collect data. Uh, like, you know, Arrow is trying to do or like, you know, even mm-hmm. discuss with the NASA panel. You have a situation where, you know, you're going to have to have equipment, even aboard aircraft, that somehow can not be jammed. You have to have a countermeasure. And so ultimately, we're dealing with a, a, a objects that basically can take off all our sensors and things like that online, which is going to make it difficult for us to be able to actually capture data. Yeah, maybe a little, right? Yeah. That's that's what is astounding. You know, and we have known this for decades. Oh, we yeah. have known their capabilities, just the limit with, because we are limited, we only see what they can do to us. You know, we don't know their full range of capability. That's right. Let me clarify. I did. I was on uh, News Nation. I've been on now twice or something I saw like that. that for, uh, and and both times I've tried to point out to the people there that look, you know, you've heard of a tic tac, you've heard of this cube within a sphere, but you're not aware of the entire UFO history and the fact that these objects that are you're hearing about now and saying that are doing incredible speeds have been doing the same thing all along. Mm-hmm. That back in the '50s you had objects that were doing the same kind of incredible maneuvers to go and reverse, uh, you know, and do uh, do a complete uh, inertial, uh, avoid inertia, if you would, that yes. they were able to make 90-degree turns that could reverse their, their, their direction. We have instantaneous speeds back then. We've got, you know, objects that don't have seams or and they don't break the sonic barrier. They're sometimes or maybe not picked up on radar. So, I mean, the same things you're experiencing now – the previous generation from you already knew about and reported them. And so it's like, you know, a lot of the, the, the new people, young people are not aware of the fact that we've had the same consistency all along, including shapes. You know, the shapes change mm-hmm. the, over a period of time. But, uh, you know, like you heard today in the sense that back in the day, it was disc shaped objects. Well, now you're hearing arrows talk about, well, spheres. Uh, well, then you're hearing about Tic Tacs. Well, you're hearing... But guess what? You know, these different kind of shapes and things like that maneuvers have been around throughout the history. They have. And you and know I, something? I've Go experienced ahead. it because I'm so old. 
<laughs> well, I'm right there with you, so it's all good. But you know, it's uh it's just bizarre, right? It's like everything old is new again. And here we are. You know, we we have, you know, our version of Roswell is the Nimitz group. And thank goodness I heard someone talking today about Roosevelt. <laughs> okay. I was just like, people forget that this was on the Atlantic side too. And yep. you know, it's it's not isolated. It's happened in the Indian Ocean. And yep. you know, it's I have a friend who was on a in a carrier group way back in the day who, you know, the the Indian Ocean lit up with things coming up out of it. And I didn't hear any, I've never heard that as far as a, a report of a sighting. And that happened with a, a Navy carrier group. And although I have seen the light bouncing on, on one out there, but, um, you know, there's all kinds of ways that these things have manifested themselves to us. And we, we just keep walking blind. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everything's hidden. And, you know, now we're creating formats where we can have conversations about this. And in large part, thanks to people like you and Peter and Larry. I mean, all of them, all of you. It's just something that it blows my mind that nothing it, has been really done. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. I mean, it, you know, you can imagine my frustration in over 60, nearly mm -hmm. 60 years uh, of being like, you know, shut down by the Colorado project, uh, you know, that, that, that basically shut science down. I, we, I think we went through the dark ages because suddenly yeah. it was like, you know, all taboo to even talk about it. And then you had, uh, you know, just it was like the dark ages. And then you had all that, you know, eventually 2017, you suddenly, you know, it's the New York Times and that breaks the, the doors down. And uh, now suddenly it's OK for me to have a hallway conversation uh, over at the Army base or, you know, and people are wanting to tell me their stories. And now things are starting to open up a little bit. So I'm excited. Uh, I'm glad to see that the change is happening in my lifetime um, and that, that I can still be a part of it. Right? I mean, that's what's the most amazing is that I have, and I have always been fascinated by this topic. And one of my greatest regrets is that I did not know how amazing this stuff was when I was getting my education, or I would have been STEM all the way through, whatever it took to get a, a handle on this. And I have to give credit because. What got me started on learning and understanding some of the science was Stanton Friedman, who, for whatever reason, took a shine to me. That's Southern, y'all. That means he liked me. But, um, you know, and took care to explain, to explain the different power functions with, you know, nuclear materials and who took cared in time to explain basic physics to me so that I could go and look at things and understand a little bit of what I was seeing. And if I got stumped, I would ask him, you know, so I got to tell you, if you're going to have a teacher in physics, Stanton was a pretty good place to start. And that's why as little as I do comprehend, I, I know enough to get in trouble. <laughs> But I come to conferences like yours where, you know, basically you better hold your PhD in a really interesting field of science because you're going to need that to be able to be a member and or contributing member. And the white papers that y'all put out, well, all the papers that you put out, I don't know if every one of them is called a white paper. But they're fascinating. And now I can comprehend them. 
So it's like, yay. <laughs> but um, I kid, I, I'm better educated than that. But, um, you know, it just really is such a blessing to be able to experience the level of camaraderie that when we met in person, I enjoyed the level of information that was shared. And, you know, I have vision issues. So people generally let me take pictures, you know, of their presentation sometimes when I ask. But, um, you know, everybody there is so wanting to share their information and wanting to make sure that if you have questions that, you know, they're resolved. And I found that with this virtual experience, the question, A, Alejandro is a great mediator, presenter. Thank he you. is a fantastic yeah. person. Great choice for that. And sure. just a smart cookie in his own right. He is such a really special human. But he moderated the questions. He he took care of getting everything lined up, everybody in, out, going, grooving. And this was nearly as good as being in person. I love being in uh, person. <laughs> well, but this I, was fantastic. Yeah, well, good. I, I'm glad that you liked it. And I, I'm, I'm certainly thrilled about it myself. So hopefully... Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to maybe come back again next year and do it in person. And, uh, and but we'll also have the virtual, uh, you know, to allow people to have the choice, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, and and you know, there's a number of people that like last year. It was really great to meet Ryan Graves in person. It was mm -hmm. nice to meet. Actually, I met Dave Grush in person. You know, the yep. the, the whistleblower. And, uh, you know, and so we all came together with some incredible people that were in the room. Uh, uh, I don't know if you knew it, but Dave, Dave Brush's boss and his boss's boss were, were both in the room. So I did not know uh, that. Yeah, we, we, had, we had a Jay Stratton who was basically the guy who put together OSAP in the very beginning. Uh, and also I didn't know he was there. He was also leading the UAP task force. I mean, he was the guy who put the whole thing together and led okay. it. Okay. Yes. You know, Whoa. So he had, yeah. I mean, we had some power hitters there. <laughs> I did not know that's what he, I did know he was there. I did not know that was what he did. All of yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, and then Travis was there. George Knapp was there. Jeremy, Jeremy Corbell yeah. came to when we had, a, a, you know, a whole bunch of others. I could go on and on. But it was incredible for them all to get together and to meet each other and to talk. And uh, we could have probably just sat there for two, two, uh, two days in a row, just, you know, just talking. <laughs> well, I, I tell what you what, I was, I was so glad to be in that environment because everybody there, I mean, I'm sorry, you don't have any not heavy hitters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, right. you really do not. And, but I do understand because these people, and, you know, I am i don't think I'm amiss in saying that, you know, at the level that these people were in their field of study, all of your members are, are that. I mean, there's not any slouches in SCU. It's just so, to me, they're all rock stars because they know stuff that I'm just starting to comprehend and they do that for fun. So, <laughs> you know, they make a living at it too. But my gosh, I did not realize that, that David's bosses were there in the, the originator of ATIP. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> you never fail to surprise me. You know that, right? And it's not I just know. the leader hosing either. It's just I, I am just everything. thrilled that you live nearby and can come. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my favorite thing that I took from that conference um, last, year, last year was so funny because I had seen John Alexander somewhere else that year. And, but 
and we had had a good conversation. And then when I saw him again, I was just like, wow. And it was a totally different side of him presenting at your conference. Okay. But that is somebody who has been there and done that and has all the coins that he'll ever need to never have to buy a drink somewhere. He is absolutely fierce. And, um, you know, it's just to have, I mean, you didn't just have, you know, the, the TikTok pilots and all of this there. You had old school UFO ufology i mean yep scu is the full package and i'm so i'm glad too that i live in birmingham and can get there easily (laughs) 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 you know i love that so i am um i'm i'm so glad that you're my friend Uh, well and you know (laughs) it goes beyond It goes beyond SCU. I mean, I have so much respect for you. I have so much, you know, care and compassion for you and your family. Love your, your beautiful bride. I just think that to to have people who have such heart involved in something that is so scientific and so potentially alarming, you know, um, you bring humanity to what is a really tough subject. And for a lot of people, it's an extraordinarily tough subject. And, you know, I appreciate that y'all recognize that there are places for people who have been traumatized through what has happened over the years that this has been unspoken and they were treated poorly and ridiculed and mocked and kind of left on their own. And, there are places that they can get help and they do if they will reach out for it. Y'all are in the business of trying to get recognition, understanding and awareness, acknowledged awareness of what created those issues so that we can possibly alleviate that in the future understand it maybe educate who is coming here that this is not ethical (laughs) yeah violates our ethics dudes let's not do that anymore okay thanks yeah but you know just kind of bring science in such a way that people can't ignore it yes and in such a way that we'll have an understanding of it do you think when we do um come face to face in whatever fashion this happens that we're going to do you think that our government is going to be able to interact peacefully or do you think this is going to be an immediate flare up if they if it if it comes to face to face I think you know I think what's happening right now is that these the let me put it uh, first off it's a global phenomena right exactly there's, there's other, there are other countries that are just as engaged uh, you know somewhat engaged anyway in the topic and they're they're kind of at a different stage and there's there's other countries out there that are not even aware of it. i mean they don't even deal mm-hmm. with it they don't even talk about it you know and they're shut down i think our country is kind of like leading playing a leading role and a lot of them are actually uh, kind of like waiting to see what the heck happens with us. And then if you look at our political system and the people in it, they're just now waking up. So I think it's going to take a, a while before we make these baby steps and get, you know, where we're actually getting to the point where we're truly engaged, fully engaging this. Uh, and so it's going to be like a, you know, a, a, a progressive kind of thing. So you know, and my hope is that, that it is kind of progressive because I want them to, you know, really spend time, get aware of it, and, and really investigate it and do a thorough job to really, you know, to really get good information and then to really make, uh, you know, make some sort of like, you know, decisions about, you know, what's our approach, what's our action steps we're going to take, wh- how do we best, uh, you know, set up the government, for example, 
to be able to collect this information. What do we do? What do we need to do with the public? How do we need to engage the public? Let's get time to be able to put that together. And then there's going to be this public education that's going to happen because there's a lot of people in the public that don't even, you know, give it two two minutes, you know. So again, there's this whole wealth of you know, very ignorant people about the subject or have just dismissed it offhand for so long of a time, right? So it's going to be a, a cultural kind of like evolution, if you would, that should happen. I think that, you know, in fact, they've got to be very careful. Let's say that they go out and they find out that they do have crash crap and stuff like that. How do they announce that? Who should announce that? Uh, who do you believe anymore uh, if they did announcement? If you don't trust the government and then the government says that, well, do you, are you going to believe them? I mean, I think there's a good part of the population that won't even necessarily believe that, right? Well, and uh, not only that, but AI, AI is being so heavily promoted right now. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, take a look at the, take a look at the fact that, you know, you've got um, – you know, there's, I was asked the other day, do you, I think that there's going to be like a panic or something like that? You know, I said, no, there's not going to be a panic. You know, we've all been talking about it for a long time. It's all over the friggin' news forever. You know, I yeah. mean, it's like UFOs are in the news almost every day on every station, you know. And so bottom line is that it's out there. People are going to need to absorb it, take it in, process it, figure it out. You know, let them have the, the time to be able to do that. And then at some point we need to make the announcement that wait a minute we we, we do have the information and, and and then the other question is you know should we be positioning this in the UN and tomorrow you're going to hear in the presentation mm -hmm. where we're making attempts to be able to now get into the UN to have a UN from a global perspective get engaged right so that needs to happen and then you should probably include you know the Vatican or you know or maybe some other elements because quite honest with you in a spiritual aspect they some people consider this stuff the demon you know not that the vatican does but anyway but you know we have to deal with the fact that there's religious beliefs out there or spiritual beliefs that maybe are you know not as into this right and so how do we address that there's a lot of complexity to this and i think that we need to be very cautious in our approach we need to have it timed we need to have an educational program, I guess, if you would, something that brings it up. And we're all getting an education even right now with the, the subject. So that's true. Um, so I, that's, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to you that I think that maybe it was even before the decades out, you know, like between the now and landing on the moon was for Kennedy when he announced it, right, mm -hmm. that we ought to have some sort of a process and education to be able to now have the conversation and know we all know what the truth is and the answers. That's awesome. From your mouth to God's ear. So, well, thank you so much, Rich. I know that you have had quite a day and I so much appreciate your time. And I just, I just appreciate you. Well, thank you so much. I, it means a lot to me to have your, friendship and your support and you're just a great gal to be able to converse with at any time. I mean, I just enjoy you. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. And that's that. Thank you so much for listening. You know, I, I talk with so many people and I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. I think that this organization this group of scientists, and they are, everyone there is, um, is degreed in science of some type, engineering. Um, it's really amazing the level of people that are working so hard to bring this information forward. I think that it's a blessing to be able to work with them and to be considered a peer by them. And... I love everything they do. If you will visit their website, you will find white papers that you can study and learn from. It's really awesome. I think that uh, you won't be remiss. You can start out the, the quick way on, um, if you go to Facebook, it is the Scientific Coalition on UAP Studies. And I believe... It is Explore SCU. 
or US or SCU Explorer. Oh my gosh, Rich, I'm so sorry. But um, I go to that site so often that you would not think I would forget that. But um, it is absolutely one of the best places to go. And like I said, again, you will have plenty of things to look at. I believe it's Explore SCU. But so much to learn. And so little time, right? I mean, who would have ever thought we would be talking about non-human biologics in the halls of Congress? <laughs> Seriously. Certainly not me. I did not have that on um, my bingo card for 2023. But why not, hey? We've already had everything else in the past three years. But I think that I think that if you are very interested in the science behind UFOs, UAPs, the visitors from other other areas, I think that you won't go wrong. I think you'll think that too. Because I'm telling you, these people are putting it out there. All you got to do is pick it up and join in. They'd love to have you. They're also looking for funding. So if you do not have the time or the background that you feel would, would be the best contributor to that, and I am that person, but... um. They're, they're looking for ways to fund further studies and to continue to do these great events like this conference. I, I just can't tell you how much I learned. Go look at their site. You'll find out what all is there. But at any rate, thank you so much. I am absolutely appreciative of every one of you. And I will be back next week, next Sunday. So there will not be a paranormal experience um, live this week. There will be a rebroadcast. So take care of you. Love somebody. And um, you know what? Be kind. Doesn't cost a dime. But anyway, be blessed. Have a great week. And see you on the flip side. Good night.